Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Old Sturbridge Village's first virtual gala, Before and Beyond. My name is Jim Donahue, and I have the privilege of being president and CEO here at the Village. And I want to thank you for being here tonight. And I especially want to thank our event sponsor, Savers Bank, for their generosity and for their support. This promises to be a very exciting evening for the Village, even though we aren't in the same room together. So I hope you'll enjoy the next hour that we have as a community. 2020 has proven to be a very unexpected year. In 2019, the Village had amazing successes thanks to your support, a record-breaking Christmas program, extraordinary fundraising, and a completion of a campaign to build a new cabinet-making shop on the Village's Common. We were heading into 2020 optimistic and hopeful and ready to go. Then, in the middle of March, the entire world came to a stop. On March 15th, we made the decision to close both Old Sturbridge Village and Cogshell Farm Museum in Bristol, Rhode Island, the village's new partner. We also closed Old Sturbridge Academy. To be honest with you, I thought these closings would only last for two, maybe three weeks. But as the days unfolded, it became very clear that we had a long road ahead of us through this pandemic. Quickly, the management team and the board developed a stabilization plan to ensure that all three of our organizations could see their way through to the other side. That meant increasing fundraising, and thanks to many of you, we were successful at raising the funds that we needed to keep the museum going. It meant creating opportunities for essential staff to work safely here at the village to preserve our agriculture program, our horticulture program, and the safety and security of our buildings and the collection. It also meant that some of our employees had to work from home during this period. Uh, that meant investing in new technologies and in new ways of doing things. And not able to bring visitors to the museum, our staff pivoted quickly to create new programming that could be delivered digitally through the virtual village. Thanks to all of those things, the hard work of our staff, the dedication of our board, and the generosity of our donors, we made it through and had a line of sight to reopening the museum safely to the public on July 1st. Our staff returned in June in phases so that they could get used to the new health and safety protocols that we had put in place here to keep everybody safe. On July 1st, we welcomed visitors back to the museum for a new experience, taking things, uh, programs that they were used to having indoors and moving them outdoors and creating new opportunities for visitors to engage with our landscape and with the campus. In a reopening the museum in July, we saw about 30% of our typical summer attendance. The good news is, as the temperatures went down in the fall, attendance numbers went up. And through October, we started to see attendance that looked similar to what we would see in a typical October. Again, keeping visitors safe, distant, and following protocols. Also in October, we introduced a brand new Halloween event. You probably have heard that we were unable to produce the Sleepy Hollow experience this year due to guidance from the state around COVID-19. We also knew that people really enjoy coming to the village in the fall and celebrating Halloween. So our program staff quickly worked together to come up with a new Halloween program called Phantoms and Fires. That program sold over 10,000 tickets and brought many happy visitors to the museum in October. Tomorrow, we launched the final season of the Village's program year with Christmas by Candlelight. Like Halloween, it will look a little different, but we still expect that the joy of the season, the beauty of the campus, and the excitement of being together, even though we're socially distant, will again result in a successful event and a great way for families to end what has been a very challenging year for all of us here at the Village celebrating their holiday tradition. Tonight, we have some exciting things planned for you. First, you'll be hearing from some of my other colleagues here at the museum who are busy working on programs and ideas for the future of Old Sturbridge Village as we head into our 75th anniversary year. Tonight, we also have some really special and fun raffle items that we'll be raffling off for you this evening. These are unique experiences and items uh, to the village. And finally tonight, we'll have an opportunity to hear from two great friends of the museum, our very own Norm Abram, who sits on the Board of Trustees, 
and of course, documentarian and longtime friend of the village, Ken Burns. So sit tight, grab a glass of wine. We'll be talking throughout the evening. Thank you for your support and enjoy our first virtual gala.